Welcome everyone, this is Zahn with Repo Products. Today's video is on an introduction to Autodesk Recap Pro and some basic navigation and measuring capabilities. I'm here in the latest version of Autodesk Recap Pro. There is a free version that you can work with as well. Um, but for now, we're going to work with the Pro version, which costs some money. And um, I have the software open, and if I want to take a look at a point cloud file, I can click open and browse to the location that I need and pick the file that I want. If it's already used, in other words, you've opened it once in the past, then the history list will remember what you've worked on, and it will show down here as well, and it'll give you a ghost-like image of the file that was worked on last. And if you just click, you can actually just go directly into that file. So I'm going to go and click the house button up here to get back to the main home navigation section. And I'm going to click open and click interior and click open. This was, you know, doing it this way, everybody is used to this old method of opening a file, but you can do a quick method by just clicking the icon in the lower left corner or clicking the screen for the most current uh, project you were in last. Here I am in an interior view of a mechanical room. And for basic navigation functionality, it's very similar to all the other Autodesk products. You can use your wheel to scroll in and out. And as you do so, it moves and the zooms in and out to wherever your cursor is sitting. And then you can press and hold your mouse wheel down and move your mouse and pan. So just like if you're in AutoCAD or Revit or Navisworks, it functions the same way. You can hold the shift key down, press and hold your mouse wheel down, and rotate your mouse, or move your mouse, and it rotates about the center of the recap file. If I do a window crossing like this to grab a whole bunch of items, and then do shift and right click, uh, shift and hold the mouse wheel down and rotate, it will not rotate about the center of the objects that you've selected. Um, <clears throat> Whereas in AutoCAD or Revit or some of the other products, when you grab a whole bunch of entities and then do the shift and the mouse wheel command, it will rotate and orbit about the center of those objects. You do have the view cube, which is just like the view cube in the other applications. You can click the faces, you can click the edges, you can click another edge, you can click the corners, and it reorients the view for you. Yeah. And if you ever get lost in your orientation, just click the house symbol and it goes back to the default view. <clears throat> you also have the ability to hold the shift key down, press and hold the right mouse button down, and you're flying through the um, model. And as you move your mouse and continue holding down and move your mouse, it's like you're flying. Uh, and if you stop, by letting go of the shift button and holding the right mouse button, it goes back to just a static mode. On the lower right hand corner of my screen, I have the navigation panel here that I can click to get to the project navigator and it expands. In here, you have different things that you can work with and for today's video, we're just going to look at the different view states. And you can actually create your own, so I have created some already. So if I click a particular view state that I saved, it jumps to that particular view. And as you can see, uh, depending on what you're looking at and what view you're in, you can see how it's set up. How do I create one of these? All I need to do is orient the view to exactly the way I want. Let's say, for example, I like this view for some reason. Head up or to the top portion here, and there's a button for the plus symbol. Click it, and it basically creates a snapshot. It asks you to give it a name, so call this whatever you want. We're just going to call this test view one, and you're done. It's saved. So if you click any other view, it changes to that view, and if you click test view one, it jumps back to what you were at. Okay? Now let's head back over to the default start view. Now my default start view looks like there's the point cloud file has been cut and I can see some spheres. These spheres are the actual scan views um, of when you took the machine, the laser scanner out to the job site. If you head over to the upper left corner, 
there are some icons and buttons here that will help you with visualizing what you're looking at as well. For example, um, if you click this first icon that's below the house symbol and head to the first icon, you can switch the color mode from RGB to elevation or intensity or to normals. Um, I prefer RGB, it looks the most realistic. Now also, this scan, by the way, is a color scan. So if you're doing a black and white scan, you're not going to get any of these colors, okay? You also have the scan locations right here. If I click this, it just toggles on um, <clears throat> those locations as well. It makes it easier for you to see. This second icon is for lighting. We can change it from single lighting to double lighting or to none. Shader modes, depending on what kind of graphics card you're working with, it might adjust. You're going to specify and modify the edge highlighting if you need to as well. And then you've got point displacements as well. So you can specify how big the points are. So the higher the number, the more pixelated it looks, the lower the number, the tighter and more refined it looks. Okay. And then um, you also have the ability to turn on or off the visibility of those mirror balls and the sizes of those mirror balls as well. And then any annotation like measurements or notes that are visible. And as you can see, as I click measurement, it toggles on and off some of those measurement tools that we're going to take a look at um, shortly. There is down here in the middle bottom of your screen, you have the ability to click and adjust the clipping, if you will, as well. I'm going to click clear for now and hit this limit box and hit reset. What this is doing is it takes the limiting box and puts it back to its default. If I click um, pick, it gives me the ability to pick a box and specify, you know, the box itself and what faces I need to deal with. So once I have um, clicked pick, you can see the box that's visible. And as you hover your mouse over the face, that particular face will highlight. And so I can left click and hold and drag down and I can start to push and pull the faces. And so you can start to see the model a little bit better and how we're cutting that actual point cloud file. And I can do this. And if I need to, I can reorient by, you know, doing the orbiting functionality. And then I can head over to this side as well and do this. Now, you may get into a situation where you want to pick this face over here. Not the top, not the bottom, not the right, the left, but my left side. And I can't seem to pick it, but if I hold the shift key down, it'll know that I'm trying to pick it. And then, then I can left click and pull. And then I can pull it back as far as I need. And when I'm done and I like how I've changed my box, I click confirm and it holds those settings. <clears throat> now what I can do as well is I can click real view right here and it engages what it looks like if you're physically in the site and looking at it and standing around. As you can see, there are these global spheres here. I can click each one and if you give it a second, it'll reorient your position so you're standing at that sphere. And if I left click and hold my left mouse button, I can rotate as though I'm standing and turning around in that space. And I can look up and down, and now I can get a better visual of what I'm dealing with. Okay? Now I'm going to switch over to one of my preset views that I've created called markups. So you can see some markups that are already there. Okay? Now, how do we deal with doing some markups and measurements and things like that? I can click Distance. And it gets into the ability to create different distance measurements from surface to surface and orthogonal um, and then freehand. Most people will just use the freehand because they just want to do a spot check of something. Let's say, for example, I want to know what is the distance from that corner roughly to that corner there. So I'll click freehand. I'll pick this corner with my mouse and then roughly pick okay, and you can see how there's a circle that's orienting to the face of what I'm touching and now that I've got it it points it at 0 0.906 meters um, recap and the recap software is defaulted to metric uh, as a default but you can change it under settings so you can use that tool to do measurement there's this pipe um, snap functionality here that you can use also for measuring uh, one of the things people like to do is they like to click um, the 
freehand distance command on that pipe and it knows to find the center of that pipe and then I can go ahead and click you know wherever I want if I try to purposely click the face of that floor that is not perpendicular to the floor you can see it's going to give you the X and Y measurements in different colors as well okay but if you were to left click where I'm at right now it'll put in that freehand measurement um, and <clears throat> Excuse me, so you'll get your distance, your uh, hypotenuse distance, as well as the X and the Y position. So those are a couple ways to work with the software for navigating, measuring, and things like that. There is markup tools as well. I can click markup and draw a an area that I want. Um, let's say, for example, this floor drain. I can then select it and click add a detail and put in a subject for that particular rectangular region. <clears throat> Call it floor drain adjustment. And then whatever notes that I want, for example, I could say um, floor drain to be removed and relocated. Click OK. You can even add an image if you want to to this particular note. Um, once I click OK, it's been captured, it's set. I can also uh, go in and click left click not right click left click and change the color if you want to or the hatching if you want to as well and then lastly you can hide or delete that particular markup if I click 3d view here it switches back to the 3d point cloud view and then I can again pan and zoom and get back to where I was from a 3d modeling perspective and, and what I want to see so this is a quick video on how to look at Autodesk Recap to look at a recap file to navigate and to do some basic measurement and markups. Thank you very much. Thank you for visiting Reaper products and watching our video. And don't forget, we are specialized in sales, training, and consultation for Autodesk software. We have multiple certified instructors and offer a ton of value. We also have a 3D laser scanning services division, and we can take care of multiple services, for example, field laser and point cloud processing, as well as others. We have printing services. We have wide format equipment sales and service and supplies. We have Xerox office and production equipment sales and services. And we also have drone aerial imaging as well. So if you'd like to find out more information about Repo products and all the different services that are available, please visit our website or send us an email via marketing at reproproducts.com. Thank you very much for watching.